today on a revolutionary, life-changing edition of Fixing the Money Thing. You cannot have peace in this life without finances, period. You've got to follow the kingdom direction for your life and let go of the security you think you have catching no fish where your confidence is in yourself and you've got to put your confidence in the kingdom. The Power of Rest, today on Fixing the Money Thing. Welcome to another edition of Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda Cassie. Recently, Gary did a teaching from his new book, The Power of Rest, and it was so powerful. It's incredible, Gary. And I think this is the season that people need to hear this message, particularly about the double portion and the Sabbath rest. Well, the Sabbath rest is powerful. It will set you free when you understand what Jesus did and that the Sabbath is really what he brought to the earth. Actually, the Old Testament Sabbath was just a shadow pointing to Jesus. Well, today on Fixing the Money Thing, we're gonna show you how to tap into that rest and how to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom of God in your life right now. God's word promises us the ability through the double portion to live a stress-free life, stay on assignment, and serve our purpose. From Faith Life Church in New Albany, Ohio, Gary Cassie's message, The Power of Rest. Well, we're going to start a brand new series today. It's going to be awesome. It's going to change your life. It's called The Power of Rest. And I think you need that right now. <laughs> it's not about taking a nap or a vacation. It's much more powerful than that. A lot of you know our situation. Many of you may not know our situation. But Drenda and I lived nine years hand-to-mouth financially, basically living in financial turmoil. You cannot have peace in this life without finances. Period. You can go to heaven, but you can't have life, peace life, uh, you know, peaceful life here without finances. That's why we call it, you got to fix the money thing. But we lived that way for nine years, you know, borrowing from anybody and everyone, pawn shops, judgments and liens, everything canceled, everything broken, panic attacks, antidepressants, you know, just a horrible way to live. You know, buying a Happy Meal and dividing it three ways for kids, I mean, just digging in cushions for quarters to go find another meal. I mean, it's, just, it's a horrible way to live. You don't have life living like that because you don't dream about anything except just making it one more day. You know, having your nose to the grindstone, where are you looking at? People that are living overwhelmed never can receive new direction because they don't, they're not tuned in right. They, wouldn't even, they couldn't even receive a new direction because they're already overwhelmed. I can't do anything else. I'm already maxed out. Now, if you're saying that today, you better unmax yourself. <laughs> and you got to change your processes. Change is required, but you can go past that. What I'm trying to say is that you've got to be able to hear the Spirit, and you've got to be able to react to it, and you can't have your nose to the grindstone. You weren't designed to live that way anyway. Your job, by the way, your spiritual occupation is not provision, by the way. Your number one job in life is not just to survive, just to, to buy the food you eat. Jesus said in Matthew 6, life is more than food and more than clothes. You have a purpose in life that supersedes paying your bills. Did you know that? Okay, making it plain here today. So you know our story, nine years, long time. And then got to the place where we just, there was nothing left. No one would give us any, I mean, we were done in fact, uh, my mother called Drenda, and Drenda was talking to her, and she said, uh, how are things going? You know, Drenda broke down in tears. She said, well, what's going on? You know, well, she said, go to your refrigerator, open it, and tell me what you see in it. Drenda went to the refrigerator, and there's a jar of empty mayonnaise in there. That was it. And so we've been there and done that, got the T-shirt, didn't want the T-shirt, don't want you to have the T-shirt, all right? So attorneys, bill collectors lined up, you know, they're waiting to talk, you know, and so you've, a lot of you heard the story, but essentially I was done. I had to hear God now. I mean, I had to hear God now. I ha you ever been there? I, I've got to hear God. I got, I've got to have some, I've got to hear God. So I uh, went to praying 
And the first thing God said to me, the mess you're in is not my fault. You ever heard people say, I don't know why God's not. You ever heard someone say that? Well, stop that. It's never his fault. Never. He said, the reason you're in this mess is because you've never learned how my kingdom operates. You'll go out and buy things on debt and want me to pay for it. That's not how my kingdom operates. You got to learn how my kingdom operates. We didn't know how it operated. Had no clue how it operated. So anyway, we began to learn about the kingdom. Now, kingdom, it's important. Again, this is a basic. Kingdom is the king's dominion. A mob is not a kingdom. Kingdom infers government that ensures that every citizen enjoys the benefit of the king's dominion or his authority flows through that government to every single citizen. King's dominion. So you got to learn you're in a new kingdom. It works different. In Luke chapter 5, we find a story where Jesus is walking along the lake there, and he's gathering some disciples around him. In verse number 4, he borrowed Peter's boat, went out and preached from it. When he had finished speaking, it says, he said to Simon, who is Peter, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I'll let down the nets. Now, this, this is super important. You got to start saying because you said so instead of rehearsing the past. Now, he just rehearsed the past. We fished all night. Are you insinuating that we do not know how to fish? You're a rabbi. I mean, come on now. We're professional. I don't know what your excuses, your past, where you come from. It doesn't matter. Just say because you say so. You got that? You just got to say because God said so to move forward. You cannot move forward saying why you're not moving forward. Well, they fished all night and caught. What do you mean? Put, go over there at deep water. We fished all night and haven't caught anything. Stop that. Just say, because you said so. Okay? Just do what God says and move forward. When they had done so, they caught such a, a large number of fish. And they said, we'll put down the nets, that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sing. Now, here is a picture of two kingdoms. One is in your own strength, all night, nothing, and the kingdom of God, two boats sinking full of fish. You choose what you want, two methods, two systems. And so Peter saw this, fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and his companions were, what? Astonished. Aren't you tired of the, of the religion Come on, you can be honest today. Aren't you tired of religion? There's nothing astonishing about it except when's it over? <laughs> Friend, you should be living an astonishing life. I mean, if you're not astonished at it, who wants to see it? <laughs> uh, this is going over well. <laughs> They were all astonished. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. you got to leave the past to find the future. you got to leave the past to find the future. You've got to leave the past. Someone needs to hear this. You've got to leave the past to find the future. And you've got to follow the kingdom direction for your life and let go of the security you think you have catching no fish where your confidence is in yourself, and you've got to put your confidence in the kingdom. You've got to start learning some new stuff. Amen? So when Drinda and I heard God say, you've got to learn how the kingdom operates, I'm like you. What does that mean? I have no idea. I'm going to heaven. I have, what do you mean the kingdom, how it operates, you know? Well, it caught my attention because kingdom infers laws. I could learn laws, but no one ever told me there were laws. I was taught to beg and fast for 25 days and cry out and weep. And the, the more I wept, I thought God heard my prayers. The more upset I was, crying and carrying on, I thought God, you know, he hears my prayers that way. Do you know, <laughs> with your legal position in the kingdom, you don't have to feel anything. You have the authority. You don't have to pray a 20-minute prayer. Come out in the name of Jesus. It's about how long it takes. <laughs> oh, okay. 
Well, anyway, so God said, let me, he, he wanted to teach me how the kingdom operates. So let me help you with your deer hunting. Now I've been hunting and not getting a deer. I don't like failure. So number one today, if you are experiencing failure, that's an indicator you've got to change. There's something you must change. Don't learn to accept failure. Don't agree with it. Start changing. Say, okay, Lord, show me what to do. I know this isn't your best. I know this isn't where I'm supposed to be. Obviously, I got to change. I don't know how to change. You show me, right? The Bible says the Holy Spirit is your counselor. Use him. Let him speak to you. I don't mean use him in a negative connotation, but he wants you to ask him for help. All right, so help me with my deer. He said, take a check, write in the memo section for my 1987 buck, my deer, sew it into a ministry that I tell you to, and call it finished, according to Mark 11.24. Mark 11.24 says, therefore, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have it. When you pray, when you pray, not when it shows up. This is a revelation. When you pray, therefore, when you pray, believe that you received it when you pray, and it will show up. Instead of saying, where is it? Where is it? I don't see it. Stop saying that and say what God says. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If God says it, trust me, he can get it done. 